a box. All right? This might not be one of the 256 it has, so it will come as close as it can. Now, since I just made it red, you're probably pretty safe that they have red in their uh, crayon box. But if I made some kind of off-the-wall color, it's possible that that would end up getting changed. Now, let's look at this. This is 614 by 460 pixels. Let's calculate that. 614 times 460 pixels equals 282,000. If we look at the size of this file, we'll see that it is a little bit off from that. But roughly, it is, it is that. Why is that? Because for the most part, it stores one byte per pixel. All right? This is not compressed at all. This is why BMP files are so, so horrible to use in projects, because they're so big. Right? There's no compression done. Now, if we go back and look at this, it's storing one character, one byte, for each little dot on the screen going across. Now, if we notice, really, if we were storing this, if we had to store this by hand, and we had to type it in, we'd type white, 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 for a whole bunch of color columns, for a whole bunch of rows, till we finally hit here. Then we'd type red, 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 white, 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 white. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just say, gee, there's about like five rows or maybe 15 rows or 20 rows of white. Then I wouldn't have to type each individual white out, right? I could just say, 15 rows times white instead of white, 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 white for all those rows. That's exactly what happens when we compress a file. All right? Bitmap uh, is an uncompressed file. In other words, it stores every pixel. If I were to go and save this as a JPEG file, This one? Do the save as down. I am not. Oh, save it. There we go. Save as. If I save it as a JPEG file, now let's look. This one is 284,000 KB. The JPEG version of it is. Roughly 18,000. So that's a big savings. I mean, that's less than one-tenth of it. Why? Because that's such a simple image, right? I mean, it's, all, it's really just, you know, a circle. So it's mainly white, and then uh, so many pixels are, are red to form a circle. So it's able to take shortcuts to do that and save it as a compressed. Now, another format that we have is a PNG file. And if I save it as a PNG file, it will turn out to be, wow, 57 KB, which is still a big savings, but it's not quite as good as a JPEG compression. Finally, let's save this as a GIF file. Gives, it the, gives us that little warning. And let's look at the size here. So the winner is GIF. All right? GIF is only 7 KB, which is half as big as its nearest competitor, JPEG. Does that mean that all our images now we're going to save as GIF files? No. What does it mean? Thumbnails, you could use GIFs, and then if you click on the picture, it'll load up like a JPEG. Okay, well, why not just use a GIF for both of them if the, the GIFs, if the GIF gives us this big a savings? Color quality. Okay, color quality. All right. 
Did you have something to add? Or? Typically, typically the pixel size? Pardon me? Did it shrink the pixel size? Didn't shrink the pixel size. What happens with a GIF is that each of these file formats, this is why we have more than one file format, each of these one file formats is best suited to one kind of image or another. All right? A GIF file limits the number of colors that are in it. That's why if you notice when I went and drew that uh, and saved it as a GIF, it warned me. And it says something like you might lose some color quality. Why is that? Because a GIF file limits how much space uh, it stores by only storing 256 colors. Or I believe it's 256. It's a certain discrete number. So a photograph, like I said before, has a whole bunch of different colors. right? And therefore, if I try to save a, a photograph as a GIF, it would probably compress it, but we would lose quality. Yes? I know that GIF was used for like a movie picture. I did too. That's a different kind of GIF. That's an animated GIF. The one thing that you can do with GIFs that you can't do with other files is you can have layers. And you can show one layer after another. So you can't, yes, you can use GIFs for that as well. That's a different use. That, that actually, that was like popular a long time ago, and that's becoming popular again. All right, uh, but yeah, um, that would be another case. Uh, an animated GIF is a way to get a, a pretty quick and dirty little animation. So yeah, that, that is very true. You could, you could do that with a GIF as well. But if we're just talking about plain static images, GIFs are good for things like company logos, right? Company logo, 256 colors for a company logo, yeah, it doesn't have more than that, right? So you could go and you could create a logo for LC. Like this. How many colors are in that? Probably two or three. three maybe yeah, right. So the fact that you're restricted to only a handful of colors really doesn't matter much. However, you take a photograph, all the different shades in that photograph is more than 256 colors. So therefore you'll notice a, a degradation. So the different file formats then, in a nutshell, each file format uses a different strategy to compress your files. All right? Because it doesn't want, you don't want to store all of the pixels. All right? There's ways that we can take a shortcut because even, let's see, I hope this stays still. Even like with this, yeah, there's a lot of colors in this section, but this section now that's pretty solid black, so we can compress that, all right? So depending on the kind of file you have, one format may be more effective compressing as another. And again, as a general rule, because GIFs compress by limiting the colors, GIFs are good where there are limited colors, all right? So like drawings typically are limited colors, logos or whatever, whereas photographs, either JPEG or PNG are better. Let's go in and let's look at a photograph. Let's go and find a photo. Let's take one of these sample photos and let's get one that I hope has a whole lot of colors in it. Yeah, let's look at the jellyfish. And I'll open that with paint. Let's do the same exercise with this. Let me go in. And let me save that as a BMP file. Let me save that as a JPEG file. I think I put it in the wrong place. Downloads. downloads, okay. Let's save it as a PNG. And finally, let's save it as a GIF file. And 
Now, let's go and look at this. Let's look at each of these. The first one, the bitmap, no, that's a JPEG. Bitmap's the second one. The bitmap is ginormous, right? Why? Because it has to store every, every pixel individually. So this is 2.3 million pixels, all right, in this. Let's look at the JPEG. The JPEG is about 200 KB. And if we look at this, looks pretty good. Next one is a PNG, which again, pretty consistent. It's between a bitmap and a JPEG, so it's compressed from the bitmap, but not quite as compressed as a JPEG. And lastly, the GIF is actually a little bigger than the JPEG in this case. And if we look at it, we can't really notice an example. I don't have the best eyesight here. I'm trying to see if there's a difference in the quality of the image. You would have to come very close, but actually this here, if you look very close on the monitor, and I'll, I'll show you, I've uploaded an example on Angel of something similar to this that you can look at that might be more apparent. If you look very close on the, mo on the monitor for this, all right, there we go. You might be able to see it. That blue doesn't look as smooth of a blue as this one does. See, this is what you get from a Mac user trying to use a, a PC. Like down here, it actually looks more like a mosaic of light and dark blue. Let me go to Angel and show my example there, because that might be easier to, to show. I created the uh, unit on images, and we'll be hitting some of these topics, but you should we read through these. Talked a little bit about raster versus vector, image file formats, which we're covering today, quality versus size. All right, here's a gradient. What's a gradient? A gradient is where it goes from one color to another. In other words, you might have a red to purple gradient, where it will start out red, and then it will get a little bit more blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, till finally it's purple. All right. Or you might have a black to white gradient where it's white at the top, and as you go down, it gets darker and darker gray. And the idea is, is that it happens very smoothly, so you know it doesn't look like bands. All right. Let's go and look. Here is a gradient done as a GIF and a gradient done as a JPEG. And I'll edit both of these with the GIMP. That way we can really we can really zoom in.
the GIMP takes a long time to start up, I will say that. Right. And the other thing is when it takes a while to start up, you can think of all the money that you save by not buying Photoshop. Think of what you can do with that money. Buy Photoshop. Buy It's not even a MacBook Pro that's held together with band-aids and chewing gum and rubber bands can run the GIMP. This guy should be able to. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's a JPEG version of the, don't tell me I closed <laughs> it. I, I'm, oh. there we go, shouldn't take as long, yeah. <clears throat> Now again, at this resolution, it might be hard to tell, but let's go in and let's zoom in 1600%. All right, that's the difference between the two, right? This is a JPEG version. Looks like nice one nice continuous color as I scroll up and down it. Oops. Notice as I go down, it's getting lighter and lighter. But it happens sort of without you perceiving it. In the, in the GIF version, because it's not storing every one of those shades of blues, it's sort of like taking and making a composite. Like, okay, if you want this shade of blue, we're not saving it. So we'll save a little bit darker version, a little bit lighter, right next to each other, and it'll fool your eye, essentially is what it does. Except when we look closer, notice that it looks kind of like a checkerboard. So, this is a good demonstration of the fact that you lose color information when you save a grid, or, or I'm sorry, when you save as a GIF, because a GIF uh, only stores a certain number of, of colors. So, for line drawings, for logos, GIF is great. For photographs, you're better off with a JPEG. All right, we'll pick up on this next time and uh, talk a little bit more about this and get into the editing of images. I have posted the next assignment. Uh, you can take a look at it. If you're already familiar with uh, editing images, you can, you can start uh, doing that. If not, we will talk about that over the next class or two. All right. See you in lab.